I'm Alan Braslow. I'm your host on Protector of the Pack. I have with me today Dr. Lisa Allmiller. Uh, Lisa is the owner of House Paws Mobile Vet. Uh, my own estimation, the best veterinary practice in the area. Uh, she and her folks constantly are bailing me out. They are also the uh, veterinarian that we use for PT's Puppy Love Adoption Center, the center that we, the uh, puppy store that we converted to a rescue adoption center only. Uh, Lisa's folks make sure that everything's in line and all the puppies are taken care of. What we wanted to talk today about is puppies and what you should know when it, ta when it comes to taking care of puppies, what to do, what not to do. So uh, let me introduce you again to Lisa. Uh, maybe we can start by, tell us a little bit about your background, Lisa, your passion for what you do and house paws and all that. Okay. Well, I've, I graduated vet school in 1999, and I was a traditional vet for maybe 12 or 13 years. And about six years ago, uh, we opened uh, House Paul's Mobile Veterinary Service, and I used to read James, James Harriet books. So I was always into, uh, you know, the uh, guy that goes out to the house to see the farm animals and the cat and all that. So I just thought it was, and I had a midwife. I had two childbirth, two wow. home births myself, so I used home medical care. So I just thought it would be great to have that same sort of thing for veterinary care. So um, we have 11 vets now. We do most of our, our calls in the, in the home, and then we only bring the pets to the hospital when they need to come to the hospital. We do have some clients that prefer hospital visits, but most of our clients love, once they have a home, home vet visit, they're pretty, they're pretty hooked. Yeah, one of the things I found when, when your folks come out, either you come out or any of the other vets come out or the vet techs come out, it, it is so it's so much better for our animals. There's less stress because they're they're in, they're in their own environment. And when we do those group physicals for my brew, my my crew, they all hang out, and mm -hmm. there's not that fear that you're dragging them in and, and they're getting nervous. Plus, when we go into your facility uh, here in Mount Laurel, uh, it just amazes me how open it is. In fact, that was a question I've always wanted to ask you. You can see everything. Right. when you're there. And I don't see that happen in most veterinary practices. They close the door and it's out of sight, out of mind. We, decide, we designed it that way because we were trying to make it stay with the home feel. Um, even in the hospital you'll notice there's, there's real pictures on the walls, there's wooden cabinets. Like It's meant to feel like home. And at your house we don't take your pet into the back and draw blood work like a traditional hospital. We do it right in front of you. So we felt the hospital should be the same way. So like literally you can see from the front desk into surgery. You can't see what we're doing in surgery, but you can see that we're properly gowned, you can see that the technicians are monitoring, you can see the machines, and there's kind of a, you know, we have some clients that don't want to leave their pet when they have procedures, and they go into the comfort room, and they get on Wi-Fi, and they have a cup of coffee, and they, they do work on their computer while they're waiting for their pet, and then they can, they can help recover their pet in the comfort room. So it, it's meant to be more it should, it's meant to have that feel, that, that feel of like you're not taking my baby away from me. Interesting. Before we get into how, what you recommend on puppies and, uh, and how we should do that, one of the things I, I've admired that you do is holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. And because you've done acupuncture with some of my dogs, we make sure, you know, it's not always the traditional. What, how did you get into that? What made you lead that way? Well, uh, I noticed very early that Oh, some things weren't getting better with traditional medicine. So some things just antibiotics weren't working, steroids weren't working, regular medicines weren't working, and there just seemed like I was missing something. And I always thought a good doctor should have as many tools in their toolbox to fix things. So I just started gathering tools. You know, I started looking at herbal options and food therapy, uh, acupuncture, you know, cold laser therapy, stem cell therapy. So there's a lot of tools out there and I think that there's a solution to fix everything. I mean, sometimes they're not if it's an end-stage disease, but with holistic medicine, which means you're looking at the pet as a whole, you try to catch things before there's an actual disease so that you can prevent the disease. But there's lots of diseases you can cure too with the right tools. So, you know, we've re reversed diabetics using food wow. therapy and herbs. Um, there's all kinds of things that, that you can reverse with uh, if you, right yeah. if you have the right tool, if you have the right tool. I remember when you first started doing acupuncture, we had uh, two seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, one was 18, one was, I guess, 15. And they both had these horrible coughs mm -hmm. and whatever. And uh, I was doubting whether or not it would do any good. Mm -hmm. But I trust you. 
right. and you came in and you did the acupuncture on both of them and all of a sudden they weren't coughing anymore. Right. <laughs> you, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Without medication, they were they looked forward, I, I have to believe, to when you you would come in because they would walk in and lie down and they're they're ready to get their acupuncture. Yeah. And acupuncture is especially beneficial if it's an acute process. Like we've had some puppies with kennel cough and we'll do acupuncture and they get better like the next day. You wow. know, whereas sometimes if you had like a chronic cough that's been two years, that might take six sessions to get better. You know, just like anything else. Like if, it, if it, how long did it take you to, if you're pregnant, how long did it take you to gain all that weight? Nine months. Well, let's give yourself nine months to lose it. You know, like, it, you know, that's like interesting. you can't lose it over me. <laughs> that's interesting. Any, any, um, Special things you remember about some of the herbal medicines you do? How that you were surprised when you started using some of these non non traditional methods? I guess I went in. I went. In, I go into everything with a healthy degree of skepticism. So I went into acupuncture and herbal medicine with that. Some homeopathic stuff that I was like, oh, I, you know. I even tell clients, this is voodoo. It's voodoo, but let's see if it works. Yeah. But um. But no, I mean, um, we have some. There's some diseases that cats get, the autoimmune diseases of the skin, and I've um, I've had several pets do great with food therapy and homeopathic uh, tinctures, um, which traditionally we would just give them steroids and immunosuppressive drugs, and these cats do great because we're actually targeting helping their immune system be stronger as opposed to suppressing their immune system. So, it just amazes me that we can ha harness the power of the body to make help them get better. Interesting. We were talking a little bit, wanted to get into puppies and yeah. things like that, and I have a lot, a lot of questions with you, uh, because I think you take a different approach than uh, some of the vets do. They, they kind of, in my mind, they rush things. So let's say someone, they're either going to a shelter or they're going to a good breeder, because I get into those discussions with individuals because I'm in rescue, that there are very good breeders out there. Mm -hmm. They don't sell to stores, they're just good breeders mm -hmm. that you can deal with and you see what everything happens. Uh, as well as P&Ts where you came in and your folks have been great helping us out. Someone gets a new puppy, what should they be doing? Well, no matter where you get the puppy from, um, you, sh you should absolutely should see a vet within 7 to 14 days of, of getting a puppy. A lot of times the breeders and the rescues will have the puppies have their shots. They often have dewormed them. But um, you have to develop a relationship from the beginning um, of, with a veterinarian. One, to help them pick the right food. Two, just because they've been dewormed doesn't mean they don't have parasites. You actually have to run a, a stool sample to find out if they have parasites. Most of the dewormers they give may be target rounds or hookworms, like the most common worms. Right. But we see lots of puppies coming in with Giardia, which is a human health hazard. Uh, whipworm is a, is a worm that if you get it in your soil, it's like impossible to get out of your soil. So a lot of people think, oh, the puppy has its vaccine and it's got dewormed. Like, we're good to go. I don't have to go see a vet. But there's so much that we, we can do. And especially if you get from a breeder or buy from a puppy store, um, there's a puppy lemon law in New Jersey. And if you get the puppy seen within 14 days and there's an issue, the breeder or the pet store would have to, um, the, the pet store would have to pay up to double to, to repair the puppy. The um, breeder would have to pay up to the cost of the puppy to fix the puppy. If you get from outside of the state of New Jersey, all bets are off uh, as far as the, the state helping you. Okay, I want to get I want to get back to that. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but I want to talk to you about what you recommend on treatments for puppies when they should be spay neutered when we come back, and also your opinion on uh, veterinarians who actually work with puppy stores that sell puppy mill dogs. Mm -hmm. Just, I have my own opinion, but I'm curious what yours is. Okay. We'll be back in a few moments. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made, 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com.
Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Pet Patrol, Protector of the Pack. I'm Alan Braslow, your host again, and I'm with Dr. Lisa R. Miller of House Paws Mobile Vet. Uh, when we took a break, we were just starting to talk about you've adopted your new puppy, and Lisa was talking about the importance of getting to your veterinarian. I personally think right away. I don't want to trust any anyone uh, and wait. Because I think if you wait, you leave yourself open for a potential problem. You're going to take it to your veterinarian anyway, so get there right away. But what are the things that you look at for a new puppy you were talking about? Uh, worms and giardia, which I've, which I've also found that people tend to think, well, I've got my puppy and, and, and it had its first couple of shots and it's been de dewormed. I have nothing to worry about, which seems right. like the furthest, my experience, the furthest thing from the truth. Right. Yeah, it, it is true. And, and just to <clears throat> go with your comment, I love, I like if people can have the puppy at home for like two days before they come in, two or three, because then they're going to have behavior questions. They're going to know the puppy okay. a little bit. So I'll sometimes say, don't come in like tomorrow like give it a day or two like then you know like it won't walk or it does this or it does that and it helps us you know do a better exam you know or when we go to their house it helps us do a better exam but um but yeah the the way that the way that they set up <coughs> deworming with the the pet stores or the rescues or the breeders is they don't deworm right for each worm so it can actually hide things in the samples oh. So most vets will recommend a fecal every time you come in because the first time it could be negative, the second time it could be giardia, the third time it could be whipworms. Plus puppies are putting their mouth on everything. So they're like little kids except they're putting their mouth in the dirt where things have gone to the bathroom. You know, they're, they're, we're not as careful with what goes in our dog's mouth as what goes in our children's mouths. So we do see them pick up more parasites. But yeah, the, I think that within, I, I think within, I, definitely within a week you should see a vet you should discuss diet with the, the, the vet, discuss your pet's lifestyle to decide which vaccines they may or may not need. And I think you should get pet insurance um, for your puppy okay. uh, right away. Because if you have pet insurance before your pu puppy comes back with a positive fecal, the pet insurance will cover the, the fecal. You know, so say you have a Giardia that takes oh, okay. six months to clear because it is a hard case. Like now you have pet insurance to cover that. But the way pet insurance works, is once you're sick or once you have a problem, that problem's written off. You just mentioned something that, that kind of jumps out at me, um, a giardia that could take six months to cure. I know we had a, a litter of puppies in our kitchen, and it was the, the puppies from hell type mm -hmm. of thing with giardia. And I remember, your, I remember, I think Dr. Wood was out, and she said, uh, it's going to take a while to cure it. Right. And so many people think that this, it's magic. You give them one dose of medication, and, uh, yeah, cer certain parasites are tough, and then they can recontaminate because they're puppies and they're, they're playing in the environment. And people can be great about cleaning them up, but they could step in it and lick their feet, or you know, they're chewing on each other's tail, so they can recontaminate. But the other thing is, is they don't have a good immune system yet. So you know, most of your immune system is in your GI tract, and if, you know, you're a little puppy, you just got vaccinated, you got taken away from your mom, now you've got giardia. You know, <laughs> and then we're deworming you, which kills all your good bacteria as well. Like it probably affects your good bacteria. So your intestines just aren't in a great place. So I think it sometimes takes them a while to clear certain things. But Giardia tends to be a tough one to get rid of. You, you made me think of something. Every time you say something, I think of something else. Right. We've probably gone through wherever we have helped us. Uh, I remember you having us putting all of our dogs on... Um, a good bacteria that we, yeah. that we uh, some something that we were sprinkling on their food. Would you do that for puppies as well? Explain the logic behind it, and, sure. and would you do it for puppies as well? Well, ideally, the ideal time to take a puppy away from its mom is around 12 weeks. Nobody wants to wait 12 weeks for a puppy. You know, the rescues want to get rid of them sooner. The pet stores want to get rid of them sooner. But between nine and 12 weeks is when they have their social learned behavior. So. They would have less anxieties and other issues if they stayed with their mom between, you know, and their, and their litter mates until they were 12 weeks old. Right. Most people are pushing them out the door at eight weeks, so they're weaning them as early as five or six, you know, and they're giving them their shots as early as six. So, you know, what, what would be nice for the puppy doesn't really happen in the real world. 
So what we do is we set them up very early, we take their milk away too soon, we put them on grain-based diets too soon, we deworm them too soon, <laughs> they get their vaccines too soon, and what that all affects their that all affects their GI tract. So I think all puppies should be on a good multivitamin mineral tablet. I think all puppies should be on a good um, uh, oil, like a good quality fish oil right. for pets. And I think most puppies would benefit from a probiotic, especially if they've had parasites. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. It's hard to sell that because people think you're selling them something, but it, there's real logic behind it. Well, you know, I was thinking along that line, um, if the folks who are doing the adoptions out or, uh, for instance, if the rescues, you, you go to a local shelter and they, you adopt a pet out, and it is a puppy sometimes, sometimes it's an adult, but if they were to provide that information as part of the adoption, you work with our pit bull rescue, mm -hmm. and uh, I know my wife has put together an incredible package of information based on a lot of things that you shared with us on the foods they should use, the vitamins they should use, the oils and whatever, uh, making them their treats and the whole nine yards so that we educate the folks. Mm -hmm. uh, the P and T's which we converted and that way when you became the, the veterinarian practice to take care of everything or we've been taking your advice and people are getting a package there as well explaining to them what they should do. I don't see that in the what I call the commercial puppy mill stores right? where they just as you said eight weeks old they they ship them out the door, they get their credit card, and uh, goodbye, good luck. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. You know, one of the th problems we ran into um, in rescue is that there are, there are probably about 30 different puppy stores that sell puppy mill dogs still in the state of New Jersey. Fortunately, one of them was just closed. This weekend, he lost his, he lost his license, but we find a lot of problems from the dogs that are coming from these puppy stores because they're commercially bred and all the things that you said shouldn't happen tend to happen uh, how I know you've been very very good in not getting involved in those type of operations and walking away from a quote business opportunity for future business what are your thoughts as to the, the ethics of what a vet, a vet should do should should they be reaching out to these folks using the thing, well, somebody has to treat them, which is a story we got, or? No, I mean, we, 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 up until P, uh, P and T's Puppy Love, we have not worked with a puppy store. Uh, and we only work with them because they're rescue oriented. Um, but, um, yeah, our vets have just decided we can't work with st stores that have puppies that come from puppy mills. Um, do the, pe the puppies need care? Yes, but honestly, <coughs> Those stores probably don't want to pay for real veterinary care, you know. Yeah. They tend to, you know, and, and they do have real vets that come, but a lot of times they want like a quick job, you know, like can you charge me ten bucks per puppy? And you know, we see puppies come from puppy stores like that, and they've got dental malformations that haven't been caught, or they've got heart murmurs that haven't been caught. So you get what you pay for. If you're going to pay for someone to come in and do a quickie job, you know, and you know, you when you hire a vet to work for it with you. You should be hiring someone that's going to help you make protocols. Um, it's going to help you keep the puppies healthy and, and help them not come back to you. You know, now not everybody that we work with does that. Like we offer that to every rescue that we work with and some rescues are like gung ho about it and other rescues just want to use us for veterinary care and don't really want advice, which is fine, but we offer it. You know, and I think that, um, ex you know, we have left rescues and we have left other places it where if they're breaking certain rules like you can't give medicine unless you you've asked us like we don't want you just giving antibiotics to everything you know what I mean yes. like we, we give one warning on that you know and if you're using medicines unprescribed by a veterinarian that's only gonna hurt the puppy and we don't want our name associated with that you know so we don't have a lot of rules we offer a lot of things but we do we do have some you know some rules that we have to follow well that, that's one of the things that I think um, I, why I enjoy working with your practice and why I recommend it to any of the rescues that I work with is that you have a conscience mm -hmm. and you're ethical and you won't, you, there's a couple of vets who I believe are kind of narcissistic, they will do whatever they can for the money and they look at the future billables. You look, you go in the other direction. It's what's the right thing to do and how to, how to address that. The other, the other question I had for you too, we were talking and you got us hooked on this with our don't bully us rescue is uh, not to do pediatric spay neuter but 
We're probably going to take a commercial break real quick, but when we come back, I'd like to explain the logic behind it and um, why you you believe that's the only way to really go. What's the impact, on, the negative impact on a dog if you're going to spay neuter? Uh, we'll be back in a few moments from our uh, commercial break, and Dr. Lisa can educate you as to why no pediatric spay neuter, if at all possible. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to make a really great sub, this is what we do. It's what we've been doing. It's what we've always done. It's what we'll always do. So what are you doing? Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. You can't predict what a pet will bring to your life, but with a plan in front of you and veterinary pet insurance behind you, you're ready for whatever comes your way. With VPI, you're ready for anything. Ready for anything. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Pet Patrol, Alan Praslow, host of Protector of the Pack, and I'm again with Dr. Lisa Allmiller from House Paws Mobile Vet. Uh, we were talking a little bit during the break about pediatric spay-neuter. Uh, Lisa had us convert about a year and a half ago with our pit bull rescue to no pediatric spay-neuter. And uh, for the record, we're 100% compliant with every adoption and over, and over 300 puppies adopted out. Uh, we also went when the puppy store in Cherry Hill converted to rescue only and as an adoption center, uh, if the dogs came up from a rescue which were not uh, spay neutered by that rescue, we and they needed to, we go with a six month agreement and follow up on that and we have 100% compliance there as well. Why? Well, I think the easiest thing to say is if you took my eight year old and spayed her right now, we took out her uterus and her ovaries right now, <coughs> Would my eight-year-old be a different person? And the answer is, I don't think anyone would deny that. I don't think anyone wow. would say, oh, you're setting her up for a lifetime of problems. She's going to get diabetes and thyroid disease and weight gain and, you know, all those things that we think about with women in their 40s and 50s to get their uterus taken out and their ovaries taken out. Like, if you take a baby and do it or someone pre-menstrual and do it, you know, you're setting them up for, for problems. Luckily, there's, rep there's studies to support that. Um, you know, I, I often talk to clients and say, oh, that the new studies show, but they're not really new. They've been out for about 10 years. Um, and they did the studies mainly in Goldens and Rottweilers. But if you, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, the studies actually show that you should go beyond, you know, six months, you know. But as far as early pediatric spay neuter, it's easy, it's cheap, um, it makes rescues feel safe, I guess, about less puppies in the world, but the rescues that I see spend so much time, they spend so much time researching who the, their, their puppies go to. Uh, I don't even think I would pass the application. <laughs> you know, the number of hours I work a day and everything else, like, you know, if your yard's fenced or not fenced, you know, they are so good. They do home checks. They call the, the veterinarians and do veterinary checks. Mm -hmm. If you do that work, you should trust that that owner is going to make educated decisions with their veterinarian for their pet's long-term wellness. Um, now, if you're a rescue that doesn't do that, then I guess spay and neuter away, but if you're doing that work, there's no reason to not trust who they're going to. Interesting. I found that some of the, uh, uh, some of the big pet store chains, that's where we've run into an issue with them, where they won't let you do an adoption event because they haven't caught up with what the reality of pediatric spay and neuter not being good or they don't trust that the rescue will actually get it taken care of? Well, you can't change corporate laws, but I'm, I would be interested to know if it's six months or earlier that they want earlier. I mean, most veterinarians are saying six months. Right. So I, I believe that the corporate places probably would not want a two-year-old that was intact 
because they think it might get into a fight. But they, I don't know that they would care if it was a four-month-old or a five-month-old that was intact. Believe it or not, they have fought us, a couple of them, over they cannot, we cannot do an adoption event at their facility unless, no matter what the age is, the dog is not adopted out until it's spayed neutered. So we take oh, the position. Oh, they're not adopted out until Not adopted out until it's spayed neutered. And we've gotcha. taken to the approach, no, that doesn't work for us. Yeah. They and don't work with them because it's not don't right. Work with them. It's yeah, not it's right. Not worth it. And you know what? The, the first thing that brought it to my attention to bring it up to rescues, because I've been talking about this for a while, but you know, about a year ago we got a bunch of rescues together to talk about it, is because really good clients started coming in and saying, yeah, they, they already spayed her and she's only three months old, and is that gonna, is that gonna affect her health? So now I'm stuck. Like, do I tell her the truth? You know, and possibly, so, so I wanted to bring to the rescues attentions, like, Educated owners are reading, and they know that they shouldn't be spayed or neutered early. And they're like, I wish I had had the choice. I won't adopt again if they spay neuter. And now I'm, do I have to worry about diabetes and thyroid and, and cancer and, and joint problems, which they read about. So if rescues don't catch up with the research, there's going to be a backlash on rescue, and people are going to go back to breeders. Interesting when you say that. And you pet work, stores. <laughs> yeah, oh, God forbid. You work with a number of rescues. What, yes. 60, 70 rescues or better that you work with, I guess now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What percentage would you say actually get it? They they understand and they've, they've read what you've given them. I mean, we went through the education process. Right. And it, it, it was like, yeah, it makes sense to do this. You've brought in good speakers, too. Right. So it's not just, I'm, I'm your vet, I'm telling you this, but you brought other collateral yeah. material in or whatever. How many really? I'd say like 25, 25% maybe. 25% have seen it work. It's, it's taking a leap of faith and believing in people, which is hard to do when you're a rescuer. Because rescuers True. have lost faith in people. They've, they have all the horror stories. You know, they, they get the, people get divorced and they don't want their dog anymore. They, they go into the military and they leave it in the house. And when they abandon the house, like we've all heard the horror stories <coughs> that happen, but that's like the little bad apples aren't what the most of the world is, you know. And I think that if you, like I said, if you do that research on your owners, I think that um, you just have to trust them, trust their vet, trust them, trust what you've seen about them. Um, but the research says that if if they're neutered before a year, spayed or neutered before a year, their chances of certain cancers are higher, like hemangiosarcoma, which is very common in the blood organs, like the spleen, the liver, the heart, osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer, mm -hmm. transitional cell carcinoma, which is bladder cancer, um, prostate cancer in boys, un the bad type is more common when they're unneutered. Really? I mean, when they are neutered. Early. Interesting. Early. Um, you know, and joints, they're, they're their growth plates don't close till they're two. So a breeder, like if I was breeding the labs, I would have their, 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 their hips pen certified or OFA'd or having like a special test done when they're two to make sure they were good breeding material. That's when breeders, good breeders get their hips checked. If we neuter them when they're younger, before that time, their hind legs grow longer which makes them more prone to hip dysplasia and I knee saw problems. those x-rays when uh, when you gave the talk and you had the folks in from North Star. It just blew my mind, the difference developmentally mm -hmm. in two dogs, same exact breed. It, it, it was like a wake-up call. Yeah. But, you know, what I tell every owner that I talk with, like re not rescues, but if you came in to me as an owner, I would say, are you a responsible owner or not? Because <laughs> yeah. that's where we have to start. And then I say, just to make them feel comfortable, I say, I'm not responsible. I take my, I have a 72 acre farm. My grandparents have a 72 acre farm in Maryland and I take my dogs off leash through the woods and we run and we play. And you know, if I had an intact female, that wouldn't be responsible. That wouldn't be a good idea, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You'd have every dog in the neighborhood. No, be, or an intact ready. male, he could smell someone and be off. So, yeah. you know, it depends on, you know, if your dogs are always supervised, you know, leash walked only, um, or dog parked, you know, where they're in an enclosed situation, um, you know, the a responsible owner can handle a pet that goes into a heat. And then, of course, knowing that they're on lockdown, you know, when they go into heat. Now, if you have a male, not all males demonstrate the behaviors that we worry about, you know, like roaming and escaping and aggression. You know, so we talk, we talk about the behaviors that could develop, marking. You know, I went to a house once and a, the lab marked me 
<laughs> when I walked in. I said, neuter that dog! <laughs> yeah. You know, it was a two-year-old lab that hadn't been neutered. And he's not running, but he's and marking that'll really, people. that'll help with the marketing? Marking, marking. The, yeah, but I also have been to homes where the dog's 12 and has never marked their whole life in their wow. home or on people. You know, so it's a responsible owner that understands, like, the pros and cons. And if things happen, like if you have a Rottweiler and he hits nine months and he starts becoming more protective, neuter him right away. Really? You know, because we don't want him to become so testosterone, you know, oriented that he's misreading everybody that walks through the door. I have another question for you because I want to make sure people uh, hear how you approach this. Uh, you know I'm kind of crazy when I call you or text you with all sorts of questions and I remember you saying to me we have a, someone on staff who's answering this 24 hours a day, on, or relatively speaking, on the weekend and then you can help us make a decision when we have an issue and especially with young puppies who get into things uh, the older dogs maybe a little bit less, but how you handle making that recommendation to take it to someone like North Star or whatever, but you're there to answer those questions. And I, I wonder if you'd explain that to the folks a little bit about how you how you address that. You mean like if a client has a problem on a weekend? Yeah, it's or? after hours, oh. it's on the weekend, and who do you want to call? You want to call somebody you trust, we trust you. Right, right. Well, we believe in being the pet's advocate. So. Um, we unfortunately everybody doesn't listen to the prompts, but one of the prompts says. <laughs> I was guilty. I, I think know. <laughs> the first one says for an emergency call North Star, like a life-threatening emergency. The second right. one says if you want to talk to an emergency technician on call, you know, and the technicians have me on call. So sometimes people are just calling because their pet's having diarrhea, which isn't a reason to to bother a vet on the you know at midnight. Right. But you know. And we can walk them, the technicians can walk them through that. But sometimes it's a real problem, like when your daughter had an issue. And um, it really helps, like North Star is a great hospital, and there's other hospitals like that too, where the, they don't mind us being an advocate for the owner. Because the owner's stressed, the owner's freaking out, they're not thinking straight mm -hmm. because of this, they're stressed, and they just want someone they trust to talk to the, to the, to the, to the, the other vet. You and I mean, even me, like one of my dogs got hit one time, the gas man didn't latch the fence. And when I went to North Star, like you're so stressed at that moment that you can't really hear what people are saying. And that's someone with right. education, you know, like, so for the owners, it really helps them to have someone that, that's their advocate. And, and sometimes if you don't have pet insurance, getting a $6,000 estimate is overwhelming. You know, whereas if you have your advocate there, you can say like, well, do all you have to do is the ultrasound first. And then let's find out the answers. Like that's an that's an estimate for if we do everything in the world. Let's start. Let's start in one place. It, it's interesting, that, and that was something I admired with you folks. And you, my daughter, for example, her dog got very very sick very quickly, but you folks were there to talk to her and then talk to North Star and help walk through the process, and then even come in because I felt more comfortable with you folks to do the surgery, having uh, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, before we end, end this, we're definitely going to have you back. We'll find some gr other great topics to have you talk about. But tell the folks a little bit of how they can reach you. Uh, you can call me. I'll always give you Lisa's phone number. I think I have it memorized. <laughs> Text her. Uh, but how they should be contacting House There's Plus. a few, few ways to contact us. By phone, it's 856-234-5230. We have a live chat on our website, which is uh, www.housepawsmobilevet.com. We have a text-only line, which is 856-723-6850. And then, of course, you can email us directly at info at housepawsmobilevet.com. And what's nice is you will find you always get a response, uh, even when you ask questions where you're saying to yourself, do I really want to ask this question? But mm -hmm. you will get a very professional and a very uh, kind response from Lisa and the crowd. Any, any last messages you want to leave for people other than don't spay, neuter, pediatric or yeah don't well I would just say be open-minded and have you know have a vet that you trust to develop a, a plan that's going to keep your pet puppy or kitten healthy as long as possible awesome. and that should be one of the topics of discussion great give me your number one more time just for those of you who are okay. like me who have attention <laughs> deficit and forgot to write it down it's 856-234-5230 thank you again for joining us uh, Pet Patrol, Protector of the Pack, Alan Braslow with Dr. Lisa Allmiller.